itself. Last night after we had dinner, we hoisted the dinghy. We always do. One of us each does a side and it goes out. And we got it right to the top and I remembered I didn't pull the plug. So I leaned up over top of the tubes to reach in, pull the plug out. I had both arms in there. Then my foot slipped off the back of the transom here and I went backwards. Luckily I didn't hit my head or anything. Like I don't know, it's not a lot of space in there. I didn't hit the skag of the motor, nothing. But when I did, it twisted both of my arms outward like that and both of them popped out a joint. Like I literally felt them both. <clears throat> when I came up out of the water, this one was out and down here. This one had come back in, but was in a lot of pain. So we, uh, I climbed up in the transom and sat down there and Tamara stayed up here and she pulled on my arm, just started rolling and twisting and it. it hurt like hell while it was out. It was like really, really painful. And, um, Eventually it just went and it went from down here and went right back up into there and it was an audible click You could hear it go thunk and uh, it was gross. It was, it was so, disgusting. It was so gross. Yeah, it was uh, an interesting moment. It was terrifying actually How quickly an accident can happen on the boat and we've gotten so complacent about it Like Jess said, he's really lucky that he didn't hit his head or scrape his back all the way down or that I was out here with him. If he hit his head, he drowned. Like there's so many horrible things that were going through my mind that could have happened. The shoulders suck, but it could have been worse. So uh, we're just working it out. It's, uh, it's funny, everything we do on the boat, we do it as a team. And so I have my jobs, Josh has his jobs. That's kind of, you just get used to your routine and that's how it goes. And it's gonna be a little changed up today. Um, uh, just a little bit um, different on how we're going to be doing things not like can't do anything I mean everything down here and lower as long as he keeps his arms in tight he can do things just fine I wiped my bum this morning <laughs> I jokingly went to the bathroom and I was in there for a few seconds I'm like babe you got my, my bum <laughs> I'm very happy that he got that done this morning uh, so yeah we've got the main sail up right now fishing rod out it's not like anything's different than it always is uh, we'll see what happens putting the head sail out that might be a little bit more difficult but uh, we're just gonna make it happen today we're sending it we're headed to Guadalupe and then one more quick overnight to Antigua and then this guy gets to rest up because you need some beach time baby I do oh I need ice I gotta ice these babies yeah it's so weird I've injured both shoulders before but never at the same time and to have both of them injured it's so weird because everything I can do is like right here I can't reach up and turn on the lights. I can't drink reach across coffee. things. Even drinking my coffee is like really hard. It's uh, it's gonna be a challenge for the next couple days. I really hope that one of them heals quick so I can at least have one good arm, but what a pain in the butt. So everything, I, I, I it's we're gonna have to figure a few things out, like putting the dinghy up and down. Like it's, I usually do the engine side because it's really, really heavy and, and uh, we might have to start using a winch to get it up, I don't know. but. Anyway, we're going to figure it out. That's how we roll. Dominica to Guadalupe is about 50 nautical miles. We were so lucky that it was a calm day with very little wind. 
It's funny, these are the days that very few sailors wish for, but given the circumstances, it was exactly what we needed. No stress and rolling into our favorite beach in Guadalupe before sunset. Now it's time to chill out for a couple hours before we get going again. Got up at 5.30 this morning and we're out. I'm having a hard time sleeping every night. Both my shoulders are just killing me. And uh, I was joking around yesterday, I feel like a T-Rex, because I can do everything from here up, like this. But if I try and lift my arms, both of them are just a mess. So I've slowly been figuring out how to do stuff, like turn on a light, I can this arm, I can lift with my elbow and get up, flick a ceiling light on, but I can't physically just lift it on its own. Or if I want to grab something in the kitchen, I can reach forward with this one and grab it. This morning, Tamara was laughing at me, so I was trying to make breakfast, and that's how I did it. But I'm adapting and taking a ton of Advil right now. But uh, I'm kind of fortunate that I have such a wonderful lady to help me not only take care of this, but she's actually very, very knowledgeable in human anatomy and muscular injuries and stuff. And she used to be a massage therapist. so. She's been helping me stretch everything out, and right now, um, basically my shoulders have stopped working, and everything else is taking over, so my, my chest and my back, every, my neck, everything else is compensating for my shoulder muscles not actually firing, and it's cramping up everywhere. In the middle of the night last night, my bicep on this side actually balled up. It just, into a, just a knot, if you would believe it. I'm really hoping this gets better sooner than later. It's not easy, but I feel like it's going to be a long recovery. I've injured both shoulders before, so I know what that's like. Fish pot. Fish pot. Um, there it is. Oh, there it is. It's yeah. right beside us. They're all over the place here. Um, so I kind of know what I'm up against. I've done a ton of physio on them in the past, and uh, stupid injuries, BMXing and dirt biking. And you know, dumb stuff. Anyway. Living life. Living life. Uh, stupid, stupid error. Um, hopefully we bounce back from this quick. Right, baby? Yeah, baby. Because <laughs> we got some sailing to do today. Yeah. We are on our way to Antigua from Guadalupe. Uh, once again, three countries in three days. We are just booking it. Uh, yeah, we're trying to get up. 150 miles. 150 miles up there. We're trying to get uh, up to Antigua to meet up with some friends. Um, I think this is going to be the last time that we're going to get to see them before they sell their boat and they're done. So we really wanted to make sure we got there just to do a one last trip with them. And then uh, it's time to slow down. Window. Well, and make the weather window, yeah. but it's this too. Yeah. So then it's time to slow down and relax and enjoy some of Antigua. It's, uh, it's a new island for us. So that's exciting and uh, I can't wait to see it. I'm super, like the beaches are supposed to be amazing there. Yeah, so it's a good place to do some R&R, &R, baby. Well, that's a, honestly, it really is. Like uh, hiking and all that, or I can hike. You can hike. But it, I can't boulder. I mean, I have a hard time. I have to be really careful even going up and down the stairs right now. If I had to grab something in a, you know, in a jerky motion or something, I, it would, I'd injure it even more. So. Beaches sound great to me right now. <laughs> We're beaching. <Yep. laughs> Look out, beaches. Here we come. What's yeah. <laughs> <So>, up, beaches? <laughs> We uh, have just left the island and it's uh, still swelly out here. It, the last few weeks has been really, really rough out here. A lot of people have been stuck wherever they were at. And you can see if you go on marine traffic, all of the boats that are on the move right now because we were pinned down in, um, in uh, Martinique for almost four weeks. But the sea state's just been nasty. It's been blowing hard and just big, big seas. Um, now it's totally calm but there's still a residual swell and it's nice when you can sail it's the best feeling in the world but the honest truth is 
you take your best wind weather window you can and a lot of times that means you're gonna motor between islands out here in the Caribbean so today it's a motor day again for us and it's really not that bad we we we're looking for whales and dolphins and fishing and just kind of enjoying it enjoying the fact that it's just not that crazy out which is really good I just saw a ray dive out of the water so that was pretty neat I'd love to catch that on film to watch them jump up in the air and fly and then go back in it's the neatest thing to see yeah. look at this mess we got right here oh. the lure uh, hooked up on itself and it just twisted the line completely in knots and we were out probably a good I don't know 200 feet More and than we that. are now <laughs> untangling Josh's bright idea he put a double swivel on the end of the lure so it's untwisting itself in the water and then I'm letting it out and the pressure is just pulling the line straight so hopefully fingers crossed it actually fixes it and we don't have to cut it and re-spool the entire rod <laughs> I hope, I hope so this too. Is, oh, look, look how tightly wound that is. Oh, like it's, Make a cool bracelet. Yeah, very cool bracelet. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. The reel just went insane and spooled out and we're like, oh my God, fish on. And we thought they were going to take all the line. And so I jumped up and I adjusted the tension and started reeling it in. And then all of a sudden it got really, really easy to reel. And I'm like, ah, damn it, he got off. And Josh is like, well, let's bring it in and have a look at it to see what's going on. So I'm reeling it and I'm reeling it and I'm like, this is really easy. Well, wouldn't you know it? The little bugger stole my pink pom-pom. I'm so mad. <laughs> that was our best lure ever and now it's gone. So now we have to go get some more pink pom-poms. Uh, we're trying something a little different. One that uh, we've put out a couple times but haven't had much luck with. It's a flying fish with a blue pom-pom on it. The pom-poms are the key, apparently, so let's see if the flying fish can make it happen. But next store we get to, you can guarantee we're buying more pink pom-poms, because that is the winner. Look at that happening right before our eyes. I've never seen a water spout before, that's crazy! Oh, that's so neat. You can see it twisting. Oh, it's freaky. We just got into Antigua, got hit with a major squall. So the boat's nice and clean from no sailing today and no salt wash, but that's okay. We have a clean boat. But check this out. The water is so beautiful, turquoise blue. It's like we're back in the Bahamas. We're so excited. Oh my God, I can't wait to go swimming. <laughs> Are you excited, baby? Oh my goodness, this is amazing. Look at that. <laughs> it's so pretty. It doesn't even look real. It doesn't. It looks like we're back in the Bahamas. I love it. We haven't seen water like this in the Caribbean yet. No, it's first time. Oh, that is gorgeous. Now we got a boat walk. Ah. I think I'm going to like this Antigua place. I don't know. It is so absolutely gorgeous here. Well, that's it. We finally made it. All that stress was building from the last trip is finally over. We didn't know how this was all going to play out with Josh's injury, but thankfully it turned out to be a non-event. We're now anchored in a brand new island with 365 beaches to explore in this crystal blue water. It's so nice to finally be in a new island that we haven't visited before. It's a rush, and let me tell you, it's been a long time. All that's left to do is find customs and check in, reunite with some good friends, and explore this beautiful new island. Thank you so much for joining us on this crazy adventure. We'll see y'all next week when we explore Antigua. If you're enjoying our content, don't forget to like and subscribe or just leave us a comment. We love connecting with you. Catch y'all later.